Every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made a way for me. Well, we're still talking about faith. Amen. Now, and I can add something to that. It was my mother's faith and her determination to never give up on me. And, and so I look back on that. Now, think about this. I think I mentioned earlier that, that little roll away bed thing and a little thing. Well, Right along about that time, Keith, mother had prayed for me and prayed for me and prayed for me and prayed for me. And she really didn't have a revelation of 1 Peter 5. But the Lord led her to do that. Just at that time, she just threw her Bible down on the kitchen table and she said, if he goes to hell, it's your fault. I'm not praying anymore. She really dumped it over on him. Two weeks later, Gloria got saved, and a week after that, I got saved. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That quick. She just put it right over there on the. She said later, she said, if I'd have known it, I could have done that a long time ago, you know. But she said, I didn't know to do that. And uh, anyway, oh, glory to God. So, Let's go to Mark chapter 5. We're still on the fundamentals of faith. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for these wonderful, wonderful words that fell from the Master's lips. Mm -mm -mm. I just love it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you. <clears throat> Hold your place there and let's go to the book of James. I intended to bring my Weymouth New Testament with me tonight and I, I walked out of the house without it. In the, and you've, you've heard me use this <clears throat> terminology. Faith without corresponding action is dead. That's where that came from, was the Weymouth translation. Now it was out of print. It's also called the New Testament in modern, was it modern speech, I think. And uh, so Kenneth Copeland Publications, we just put it back into print. So we have the publishing on that. <clears throat> just my goodness. It's one of those you just, you just want to just sit down and just read it. You know, and, and <clears throat> but now you remember <clears throat> in the second chapter, <clears throat> well, let's just come down here to the 15th verse. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say to them, Depart in peace. Be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful for the body. What does it profit? Even so, faith, if it does not have corresponding action, is dead. If it doesn't have corresponding action, it's dead. And he goes on to say, you know, uh, he, com he compares it to the, the the, the body without, without the spirit is dead. Faith has to have that action. Now, the classic is right here in, in Mark chapter 5, where the woman with the issue of blood, the woman that had the issue of blood, I can hardly wait to get to heaven and find out what her name is. I want to find out if she was married before or married after. I want to know this one. I've known her for years, but <laughs> amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, notice what she did. 
<coughs> and she, in corresponding action, verse 25 of chapter 5 in Mark, a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years had suffered many things of many physicians, had spent all that she had. Now, this woman obviously had been a woman of means, and she, but she spent everything she had. So she's not only sick and has been sick for a long, long time, and she has been shut in for, a long, for 12 years. She couldn't get out of her room because you could check it out in the fifth chapter of the book of Leviticus. She's unclean. And so she's shut in. <clears throat> when she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment, for she said. Now we've touched again on the very basic fundamental of faith. God said, the Spirit of God was moving on the face of the deep, Keith, and nothing was happening mm -hmm. until God said, yes. light be. <sighs> light was. Not, not sunshine. What is that, four days later? power of faith spoken by God. Jesus demonstrated that same faith. Oh yeah, David, I'm, uh, I'm going to need my iPad for this, please, sir, if you don't mind. Uh, I want to un unravel a little something here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sir. It just still amazes me. Open your iPads. <laughs> Somebody said, you old school. Uh-huh, I'm old and I went to school. <laughs> but not on this. <laughs> okay. And we'll go to 11. Let me read this first. Go, go on over there to the 11th chapter of Mark because there's been a lot of discussion about this. <clears throat> and let, let's look at the 13th verse, please. Mark 11, 13. Seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves for the time of figs was not yet. And you notice yet is in italics. Let me read that to you in the classic Amplified. Seeing in the distance a fig tree covered with leaves, he went to see if he could find any fruit on it. For in the fig tree, the fruit appears at the same time as the leaves. But when he came up to it, he found nothing but leaves for the fig season had not come yet. That tree lied. That tree was out of phase. He said to it, no one ever again shall eat fruit of you. And his disciples listening heard what he said. <clears throat> Does that settle anything in, in your heart and mind? That tree was it was either at the tail end of the of the season or at the in the beginning of the season but it had leaves all over it jesus walked up to it and didn't have anything so that's good to clarify that people just need to, need to hear that one that jesus didn't understand figs <laughs> come on <laughs> all right <clears throat> Now, let's go back to that fifth chapter. But now notice, what did Jesus do? 
He spoke to that tree. He spoke the end result. He didn't stop and wait to find out whether it is going to dry up. It could have stood there green, green, green for years and years and years, and nobody would have ever gotten any fruit off that tree. He didn't care. He just said what he intended to happen and headed to Jerusalem. What was his corresponding action? He just turned around and walked off. That's a dead tree. Lightning hit it. He, what did he care? That's, that wasn't his business. His business was to say it and believe it and turn around and go to Jerusalem. Now, you know, now somebody was talking about me preaching long. Come on, uh, children. Yeah, it was you too. <laughs> yeah, it was. No, it was that. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus preached all day, more than once. And an evening came. Go call him long winded, Dennis, okay? I'm going to be just like him if I can. <laughs> Amen. I love it. You know, Oral Roberts, my, my spiritual father, uh, I'm telling you, he would, and Richard, I can just, I can just see him, and he would begin to describe a scene, and particularly in the fourth man, and particularly when he talked about Samson and Delilah. And you could, you just could see it. I mean, you could feel the heat of the furnace. See the battle of champions. Yeah. Oh my, my, my. And you look up, dear Lord, two hours and 15 minutes. Are you kidding? It's 15, 20 minutes like it was. Nobody, <laughs> nobody hardly breathed. Don't you know that's the way it was with Jesus? I mean, no, you just, <sighs> yes, yes, yes. on every word. And don't quit now, sir. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Anyway. <laughs> Mark 5. Now remember, faith, believe it in your heart, say it with your mouth, then do it and then testify to it. That's what Jesus in a vision told Brother Hagin. Say, well, are you trying to be like him? Exactly, just as close as I can get. Absolutely as close as I can get. <laughs> I listened to his tapes so much. And the first tapes I, I had, of course, I listened to them night and day. I, I got that little battery operated thing and I'd take it in and while I shaved, I'd turn it on and, and Gloria listened to it all day while I was in school. And then we go to bed with it at night. We still do. But anyway, uh, we were watching uh, a particular message, uh, Brother Hagin preached. And uh, I mean, this is a long, long time after he's already gone home. But there's something that has a specific message that I wanted to see. So we looked it up on YouTube and then put it on the iPad. And so when he started giving the invitation, since Gloria and I were already saved, we thought we'd just turn it off there. So I, I laid over the kiss, kiss her goodnight. She said, not in front of Brother Hagin. <laughs> we have a lot of fun together. And uh, so anyway, um, <clears throat> that area of corresponding action. The woman with the issue of blood, like I said, she said it. She got out in the street or she acted. She received it. 
And what did Jesus do? He wanted to hear the whole story. That's how we know what all happened to her. Because she told him. She told him how she'd been sick. She told him how she'd had money. And she told him, she told him the whole story. And Jairus is standing there. But his faith has hold of him. But you can kind of think, you know, uh, could we get on here? But Jairus, the first, actually Jesus and Jairus both. I'll say it this way. When Jesus went into the temple, Tom, he didn't do anything. Walked around in there. I'm not so sure they knew he was there. He just, because he upset the place anytime he walked in there. He just hid himself in walked through there. Why didn't he do something? Why didn't, why? Because he didn't do anything without he heard his father and saw his father do. Now, listen to this. This is the first rule of faith. Don't shoot your mouth off. Now, if it's an emergency, I'm not talking about emergencies. I'm talking about the usual believing God. If something happens in an emergency, shoot your mouth off, but do it in tongues. Do it in tongues. And the scriptures that come rolling out of you, that's a different thing. That's not what I'm talking about. But just keep your mouth shut until you know what to say. Until the word becomes life, until you find those scriptures that cover your situation. Several of them. Then you have something to say. And don't change it. Just keep on with that. Anyway, he didn't do anything or say anything till the next day. But my, I'm, the Spirit of the Lord on corresponding action. It can be action after, it can be action before in preparing for what you expect to happen. What you believe is going to take place. And you're preparing for the miracle. You're preparing, getting everything ready. You're believing for a child. You've been having a difficult time with it. Hey, go buy the baby stuff. I'm going to go buy the baby stuff. And enjoy it. En- enjoy the whole thing. And and you know, you know this 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 is me talking right now. But I mean, I've been around a long time. And uh, uh, little mama, when you go in there, I mean, yeah. you know, I don't do goofy stuff. Don't stuff a pillow in there or something like that. <laughs> you don't need to do that. You fill your spirit with the Word of God. You don't need to stuff your dress with a pillow. Go prepare the nursery. Amen? Amen. There was a testimony we had that excited me. This woman's son was in prison. And she prayed, stood on the Word of God, sowed her seed for that boy to come home. And she fixed his plate every breakfast. She would take that clean plate and wash it and put it in the cabinet. Mm-hmm. She would fix the lunch and she'd do the same thing. She'd prepare it and then wash the dishes mm-hmm. just like he was there. And she would thank the Lord that he was there and uh, visit with him 
just like he was there. And this, this kid was a terror <laughs> when he left home. But now here's the beautiful part. He came home born again. He got saved in prison. Isn't that a good story? And then he sat right where she had the place set. And then that morning he got up and they had the same conversation she'd been having. I don't remember how long, but what is that? Corresponding action to her faith, preparing for what she already believed. My name is Doc Pardon, and this is my beautiful wife, Sherry, and we live in King William, Virginia. The Lord's really been working on us about what we say. It, 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 you can't be walking around with the Word, talking to people, and then turn around and say something completely contrary to what the Word says. It does not work. You will see what you say come to, to, come to pass. And we knew that we needed our faith to be built. And through the teachings of Kenneth Copeland Ministry, it's really taught us um, how to act on our faith, how to confess, how to believe. Mm -hmm. Through the teaching of God's Word that's coming out of Kenneth Copeland Ministries, it is really, really, we have really built our spiritual house by listening to um, his teachings, um, as well as the prosperous life. The prosperous life has helped us to learn how to do that, um, studying scripture, meditating on it, having the word of faith, not only in our heart, but in our mouth as we speak it. Mm -hmm. And we have seen things happen, good things, by, by doing that and, and practicing the word of God. And, and the Lord put it on our heart to sow, like she said before, into good ground. So we, we've asked the Lord, okay, define good ground. He put Kenna Copeland Ministries on mm -hmm. our heart and we've, we've started to sow into there. And I'm telling you, because we have given periodically to Kenneth Copeland Ministries, um, but the Lord really put it on our heart. To, to go monthly. A, to, a, to be a monthly partner. So we recently signed up for that. We had a business for a few years, uh, made some unwise decisions, and uh, put us in a, in a spot financially. We were probably in about um, $150,000 in debt. That's not including the house. That's not including our home. With the house, it was around, around a total of over $400,000 in debt. We have been tithers and givers the whole time we've been married mm -hmm. and before. And, um, and we've been good at giving the 10% plus um, offerings. Um, and, uh, but we really hadn't put our faith to receive. That's why when the boat title came, it was, it's what we needed. Mm -hmm. It's what we needed. We needed to see an act of God in our life. We had been standing and praying about that cancellation. Debt cancellation and been asking the Lord for wisdom. He started helping us, directing us. And some of these things that He shows you is like, ah. but when you do it, then you see and you're like, okay, Lord. And He's like, okay, I got another thing for you. We had come back from vacation, yes. July 6th, and there was an envelope. And my wife said, this is yours. <laughs> Handed it to me and I opened it and I, got, I was quiet. She said, what is it? I said, it's the title to the boat and the trailer. And we owed $25,000 $25, on this. On the boat. When we went to the uh, Virginia Game and Fisheries to title the boat in their name, and then of course you had to go to DMV to do the title to the trailer, um, Doc asked the clerk, can you check your system to see if this has been paid off? And, uh, and she looked at me kind of crazy. She <laughs> said, you got your title. And she, she said, it, it shows paid for. It's completely paid for. Yeah. I said, she said, Is, I said, no, no, no problem. No, no problem. <laughs> she said, it's paid in full. I just wanted to double check. I'm like, okay. It was surreal, but we know that we was believing God for that cancellation. Um, we knew it was gonna come sooner or later. And you know, we received the boat title, you know, it just took our faith to the moon. It gets your expectation level right. of the goodness of God to be so tangible. Look, this is God's word in effect. It, here it is. It's paid. It's, it's a debt that's gone. That's the goodness of God, the goodness of God. And there's all been other things too that the Lord has um, blessed us with um, over the past, since we've been standing and confessing the word. See, God is no respecter of persons. 
He'll do it for you just like He did it for us. And you just believe Him. Believe who He is. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And He certainly has blessed us. Mm -hmm. It is so encouraging to hear people's stories of how living by faith led to greater things in God. As Brother Copeland said today, faith is always working and faith prepares for what's ahead. Now listen to me, if you don't want what you see right ahead of you on the road right now that you're on, it's time to make a change. And the good news is God has good plans for you to give you a future and a hope, but it begins with making Jesus the Lord of your life. There is no way in to God's good plan except Jesus. If you've never been born again, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, let's do it right now. Pray this prayer out loud with me. Just say, Father in heaven, I come to you in Jesus' name. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. I confess with my mouth, Jesus is my Lord. I repent and I receive your forgiveness. Take my life, Lord Jesus. Do something with it and fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, if you prayed that prayer, something big has happened on the inside of you. You have the faith of God in you now and you can develop that faith to receive the promises of God into your life. And that's why KCM has put together some free resources they want to give to you. We call it the Salvation Package. In this package is a book by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland called He Did It All For You. And along with this book, we're going to send you a couple of just little brochures that are here to help you learn how to read and how to study your Bible. And you need to read your Bible because the promises of God for you are in there and you need to find out more about who you are in Jesus and who he is in you. So request your free salvation package today on kcm.org. And while you're online, you're going to find more free information and teaching on other topics, things about healing, things about joy and peace, prosperity, and so much more. Brother Copeland calls kcm.org your personal study center. So visit it often, get back on track in life, and get ready to grow your faith in God. Listen, we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Brother Copeland will be back sharing with us a powerful message on freedom. Listen, Jesus can set anyone free, no matter the addiction, the bondage, no matter the fear, no matter what it is, his plan for you has always been that you would live like a free person, that you would live with perfect freedom in this life. You don't want to miss this broadcast tomorrow. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you again next time. Until then, remember, God loves you and we love you. And Jesus is Lord. Request your free salvation package today. Email us at partners at kcm.org.uk. 2021 is the year of the local church, a year of divine healing, divine health, divine prosperity, and divine recovery.